thank you for coming, everybody. We're going to call this afternoon's meeting to order. Present this afternoon are myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Commissioner Helen Kahn. This meeting is being Zoom recorded, and we're going to open with public comment. This is um, your opportunity to speak to any of the agenda items if you have come here to do so. You could raise a hand. And I don't see anybody here for public comment. So we'll move on to agenda item number three. Application for short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music Incorporated to 74 Main Street on December 1st, today, 2021, 7 to 11 p.m. This is for the Sarah Jaros event and a wine and malt license with a requested fee waiver. Is someone from the Academy here? Melissa, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Could you just state your name for the record? Sure, Melissa Cleary. I'm a theater manager at the Academy of Music. Great, thank you for coming. Um, and this is your usual event? Usual same, event. Same um, setup and everything? Yep, it's exactly the same as usual. Okay, great. It's Helen, do you have today. any questions? Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, it's just tonight. Yeah, so, it's, right. it's just, <laughs> it's just That's a little different than usual, but that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Helen, do you have any questions? I don't. I, I can make a motion if you'd like. Great. Thank you. Uh, okay. I'll make a motion to approve the application for the short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music as detailed in item three on the agenda. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good event tonight. Item number four, application for a change of manager on an annual wine and malt package store license for Pride Stores LLC, DBA Pride, 375 King Street. Proposed manager is Cecile Humphrey. Actually go on. Do we have anybody here from Pride? I, yeah, I, I, my name is Ray Sager I'm here from Pride. Oh, hi there, how are you? Good, how are you? I don't know if Cecile has joined us yet or not. Okay. We can move on to the next item until she arrives. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we'll do that. Moving then to item number five, application for a new common victual license for Wild Chestnut Cafe, LLC, 22 Chestnut Street in Florence, Rosalie Black and Melissa Lacarite. I apologize for that. That's Melissa, I'm Rosalie. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you guys. Could you just state your full names for the record? Sure. My name is Rosalie Black and I'm Melissa LaCharity. LaCharity. I really butchered it. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, we're really excited to have you guys here. Could you give us some information about what it is you're up to? Sure. Yeah. So we are in the space in <coughs> that Cafe Evolution used to be and yeah. they recently sold it. They decided to close and we are the people that bought it. So we're going to be opening a new vegan cafe in the same space, and um, we're hoping to open as soon as possible. That's exciting. <laughs> um, have you ever owned a food establishment before? Uh, this would be our first, but Missy has worked at Cafe Evolution, and she has 20 plus years of experience in the industry. Okay. That's I worked cool. at Pulse Cafe in Hadley for a long time, and I have been in the food service industry as well. Great. Well, it's really exciting that you guys are taking this step. So the yes, place we're very up. excited. <laughs> Helen, do you have any questions? No, I just want to say fantastic and congratulations. It's a big undertaking and I wish you all the best. Thank, awesome. you. Thank you. We're excited to start serving food to the community. <laughs> That's awesome. great. Do, do you have a, um, when is your, do you have a planned opening date? Uh, yeah, we're, we're waiting to hear back from some hoops for uh, different types of like, uh, what do you call it? Inspections and such. Mm -hmm. So but it, it kind of depends on that, but we're hoping for mid December. So in less than a month, if possible, but it kind of de de is determined on the hoops. <laughs> right, yes, I'm very familiar with those hoops. So yes, so <laughs> this is one of them here and I'm yep. ready to make a motion if you're okay, Natasha. I am ready for motion. All right, so I will make a, Motion to approve the application for a new common victualler license for Wild Chestnut Cafe um, at 22 Chestnut Street in Florence. I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay, is Cecile here? I don't see her yeah. yet. I'm here. Oh, you are here. Hi, how are you? 
I'm good. I was muted. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Sorry. Okay, we're, gonna, we're gonna go back to item number four then, the application for a change of manager on an annual wine and malt package store license for Pride Stores, LLC, DBA Pride, 375 King Street. Proposed manager is Steele Humphrey. Yes. Okay, great. So um, I believe there's two of you here. If you guys could just state your names for the record. I'm Cecile Humphrey. I'm Ray Stark. Great, thank you. And could you just uh, let us know what it is you would like to be doing? Uh, basically, just I, I'm Ray Stark. I'm the district manager for the liquor stores for Pride. Uh, okay. We're basically change over managers uh, on our license. Um, Cecile has been with us for a number of years. She's uh, tip certified, trained. She's, uh, you know, responsible. She's the right person for the right position. Uh, and and uh, Larry left us during COVID, so we're just looking to, uh, to 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 get that her name into that license. Okay. Helen, do you have some questions or a question? No, I know all the paperwork's in, so I don't have okay. any questions. No, everything looks great. Um, then I'll make a motion to approve the application for a change of manager for annual wine and malt package store license as outlined in agenda item four. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so that brings us to item number six, public hearing on an application for transfer of license on an annual wine and malt license license transfer from, from belly of the beast incorporated transfer to wine Witch llc proposed manager is michael angelo westcott and i am going to make a motion to open the public hearing second all in favor aye. aye is there anybody present to comment on this um agenda item yes. apart from the parties none present okay great go for it Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. Could you just state your name for the record and let us know your plans? Yes. Uh, my name is Michael Angelo Westcott, and uh, we're planning to uh, open up a wine bar and eatery um, at the 159 location on Main Street in Northampton. We're very excited about this. I am, I, I am also. Yeah, no. Great. Do you like the color? I haven't been down to see the color, but I did see pictures of it online. So I, I did like the colors. It's a nice change. So nobody can miss that something is happening there. Absolutely. Great. Um, Helen, do you have any, any questions? Uh, no, I don't. Except that, I guess, do we need to close the public hearing? Oh, right. yes, we do have to do that. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Now we can discuss. Yes. Um, did you have a chance to review the paperwork? Yes, and it looks great, and I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, I don't think there's yep. any issues. Yeah, no, I have no, I don't have questions or concerns. This is really exciting. We have two experienced people taking over the space, and it's going to be great. All right, All right then. Sure. Do I need um, to open the hearing to make the motion to approve it. I don't think. I, I don't do. think so. I okay. think just at this point. So yeah, so I, I'll make a motion to approve the application for transfer of license on an annual. Wine and Malt Restaurant license from Belly of the Beast to Wine Witch LLC. I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you both for coming. You're yeah. welcome. Good Thank luck. you guys. We look forward to your opening. I'm looking forward to uh, <laughs> us too, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. All right, see ya. Thanks. Item number seven, public hearing on an application for transfer and pledge of license on an annual all alcohol general on-premise license, transfer from Recon LTD, DBA Bishop's Lounge, transfer to 41 Strong LLC, DBA Bishop's Lounge. Proposed manager is Carla Racine. I may have mispronounced your name, I apologize. Do we have anybody here from... Hello. Hey, hi, Natasha. It's Volkan uh, from Econ Ltd. Um, I'm not sure. It's, I can't see Carla. I'm not sure if her lawyer is here. I don't think so. I don't see either of them. No, not yet. We can go to the next agenda item to give them a few minutes. I'll just do some text messaging, see if maybe they're running late or something. Okay. 
we Appreciate will. It. The next couple items are really quick, so we'll just jump ahead to those. While you I know. I, I was going to say, this is the fastest liquor commission here I've ever seen. You guys are getting very proactive over there. <laughs> approved. 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 <laughs> I'll talk slowly for you, Volka. Uh, thanks. Thanks, man. Buy me some time, Evan. Well, it's nice to have people come forward with agenda items who have a lot of experience, and yeah, and it's it's nice to see that. Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to jump ahead to agenda eight. Application for a new entertainment license for River Valley Market LLC, proposed entertainment 12 to 5 on weekends, occasional live music for special events. Is someone here from River Valley? Hello. Me. How, you're going to make this one difficult, right? What's that? No, not at all. So we can prove all kind wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Evan Lash. I'm the facility manager for um, River Valley Market LLC. Great, thank you for coming. So do you just want to tell us a little bit about what your plans are? Uh, yeah, we just um, want to be able to have uh, music out in our parking lot for an occasional special event. Uh, we do a, a birthday celebration um, and uh, one or two other events. Uh, we haven't done it in the last couple of years for obvious reasons, but uh, we would like to get back on uh, to doing it. Um, it's usually acoustic sometimes amplified but if you know the property uh we've got granite walls on three sides of the parking lot so it really you know the the other side is the highway so yep. okay helen do you have any questions it, yeah so and uh excuse me because i'm sure it says this in the paperwork but this is just for the northampton location correct okay um no, I mean, have there any been any issues or complaints that in the past with the entertainment that you've had there? Uh, no, I, we're on, uh, we got the Sabiskis on one side who we're, um, we, we have great relationship with. And then we have the Sullivans on the other side who um, we just never he hear from. So we never heard a complaint from them. Glad to hear it. Yep. Yeah, excellent. Um, I have no questions. Heather, do you want to make a motion if we're ready? I will go for it. I'll make a motion to approve the application for a new entertainment license for River Valley Market LLC as detailed in item eight of the agenda. I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Great. Thank you. See ya. And I think we're still waiting for other folks for item seven. So we'll go. Uh, to I'm here on uh, item seven. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Yeah, they're here now. Okay, uh, super. So we'll just hang on. That. Just one second, please. Sure. Uh, yeah, make your way around here. And then... Okay. Yes, uh, I'm Brad Schimmel, uh, and this is Carla Racine. I don't know. No. Can you see us? No. Oh, I don't know. I, I should be. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, there, I think we go now. I can see, now yep. I can see myself anyway. Hi. Hi, thank you for coming. We were having, we were having technological difficulties. <laughs> no problem, glad you made it. Um, just so I'm just gonna reopen this agenda item. Um, this is agenda item number seven, public hearing on an application for transfer and pledge of license on an annual all alcohol general on-premises license transferring from Beacon Limited DBA Bishop's Lounge to 41 Strong LLC DBA Bishop's Lounge with proposed manager, Carla Racine. Um, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, so thank you for coming. Can you just let us know a little bit about your plans? Wait, um uh, uh, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll just give a, a brief introduction. Yeah, uh, the applicant is uh, 41 Strong LLC, uh, which was created by uh, Carla. She's the sole member uh, of the LLC. Uh, so she's, she is it. Uh, and it would be uh, doing business as Bishop's Lounge. It would be on the third and the fourth floor of the building. There'd be a small storage space in the basement, but that wouldn't be open to the public. Uh, and uh, I don't, I'm not sure if you got together with this, um, the application for an entertainment license and common vicular's license. Um, 
I think that we just have the transfer application. Okay. Uh, Annie Lesko's been out ill for about, seems like five or six days now. Yes. She's she's here in the background keeping this keeping the ship moving forward. She's here. <laughs> Hi, Annie. Uh, she doesn't have much of a voice, so she's yeah, literally she's just low. moving <laughs> forward. <laughs> yeah, we uh, because the uh, the uh, in addition to the service of alcohol, uh, the the entertainment aspect of this is something that Carla could describe. It's very integral to the to her concept. And maybe it would be good if she could just uh, give a, a, a description of that. Um, historically, uh, 41 Strong has been a music venue in addition to being a nightclub or the Bishop's Lounge has always had live entertainment and has been a mainstay kind of cultural staple in the community. And that is the main interest I have in actually um, in, in the Bishop's Lounge is that it's one of our last independent venues that's open. Um, I've worked in the music entertainment industry for the last 10 years intimately. I've had my own business. I've worked for other venues. So the entertainment license aspect of this is, it's just very important. Um, they hold down live entertainment. They used to do it seven days a week pre-COVID um, and they do it now five days a week. And we have a very diverse, um, lineup of entertainment. It's also very culturally diverse. We have many different clients that come from all over New England actually to come to this place. It's a, I think it's a very important business for the city of Northampton to maintain its uh, cultural importance and its venue status. Um, it's a great small nightclub where you get to see really incredible entertainment from comedy to live original music to open mics to um, we have a wonderful night with for funk, one night for reggae. It's just, it's it's a great place. Mm -hmm. I want to carry on pretty much the same footprint of Bishop's Lounge, what they've been doing through their many owners for, you know, gosh, over 20 something years, but 17 years in this building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that, that that's why I just wanted to touch on the entertainment license because it's, as I say, it's important to the overall concept. And uh, uh, I was just somewhat, uh, uh, curious about how we could handle that since it didn't make the, the application for the uh, entertainment license didn't make it officially onto the agenda today. Uh, we had gone by City Hall with it for to see if it could make it into new business because we hadn't heard back from Annie. Yeah. And they have the applications in office. I spoke with um, the secretary yesterday in person and they do have them in City Hall. What is your plan? So Bishops is currently open and you're, there's, are you renovating or this is just going to be seamless transfer of ownership? Seamless transfer. Okay. Keep it, just keep it going. Hopefully seamless transfer. So. Okay. Yeah. So what I would propose doing and Annie can, can poke me if she can't speak, if you send a note or something, um, I would propose making it, approving the entertainment license and the common eviction contingent on the paperwork being reviewed since Annie hasn't been in the office. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to make sense so that the transfer can happen seamlessly in business. Yeah, that's so appreciated. Thank yeah, I think, I think that's an excellent approach. And uh, uh, that, that's, that's a very good way to address it. Uh, sort of that backing up then a little to the, uh, to the application for the alcohol uh, license itself. Uh, Carla has entered into an agreement with uh, Volcan, the, the current owner. Uh, we submitted as part of the package uh, a fairly detailed uh, agreement, an asset purchase agreement, uh, promissory note, which is the, the main method of payment. Uh, there's not going to be any commercial financing. Essentially, it's seller financed, if you will with a security agreement that includes a pledge of the all alcohol license and uh, a guarantee by Carla. So it, it's, uh, it, it's, it is funded through that method. And uh, that's in place along with a, uh, an initial 10 year lease and with two five year renewals. So uh, the overall concept here is to 
get the the, the, the business underway. It would have a it would have a good term of time built in uh, at the front end. Uh, and everyone's thought about it quite a bit. I think if you look at the documents, you can see they're very detailed and, uh, you know, everyone has been uh, working hard on getting this together. So, uh, if, if there are any questions from, from the uh, commission, I'd certainly be glad to, uh, to address them. Or if uh, it's something that is more appropriate for Carla, I'm sure she can uh, respond as well. Okay, thank you. Um, I am going to just close the public hearing portion of this and discuss with Helen and then we'll reopen if there are further questions. Okay. I'll make a motion to close public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, I, was, I wasn't being facetious earlier when I said it's nice to have people come forward with experienced people who've been working in the community and are familiar folks um, to come so thoroughly organized with your application. So this is another one. Um, and I'm familiar with Bishop's Lounge. I haven't met Carla personally in the past, but I'm familiar with who she is in the entertainment community. community and I know um, Volcon and um, I don't actually have any questions. This is a really thorough application. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I mean, looking through this, it's great to see the detail of it and the, you know, the long list of experience, Carla, that you have. Was, was great. You. Um, so I don't have concerns. Um, the only, and I agree with you about how to handle the entertainment license. I, and I don't know if you said this, but can you just give us a brief sort of synopsis of what the entertainment, how it reads in terms of days a week, hours, things like that, if, if you know. <laughs> Me? Uh, yeah, so oh, yeah. Carla, if you have that, sorry, if you have that information, sorry. Carla. Um, what are we looking at right here? Description of the, so more like, um, so it's funny, you know, it's a nightclub, but it's also a cultural center because a lot of people come together there and um, it's to be inclusive of all live performance, all genres of live performance that's considered art and entertainment, um, uh, all genres of music, dance, poetry, art, multimedia, because we, we've also come into this multimedia setting, you know, we'll be doing like some live stream stuff out of there and, and whatnot. But, you know, we do everything from, we follow hours of operation with uh, our live music. Um, it's, we, we do pretty, we do pretty good with it. I mean, it's pretty steady flow of, of people coming through. We want to allow for private rehearsal time for bands. Um, we want to allow for uh, classes. We want to have open to the public entertainment between 10 a.m. and 1.45 a.m. And part of the, um, you know, just having that kind of window. We already are open for live entertainment until 1.45 a.m. or 1.40. It might be off by five minutes there. Um, and seven days a week is what we would like to ultimately get back to at some point. So, you know, given that the state of our, the, our health and our environment We'll see, but right now five days and uh, with the hope of opening up, you know, having that window to, to go back to how it was, would be great to develop. Okay, well, yeah, thank you for summarizing that. Um, yeah, so I don't have any other specific questions about this. It looks like it's in good shape. Yep, I don't either. Um, I'll go ahead and make a motion then. Okay. I will make a motion to approve the application for transfer and pledge of license on an all annual, annual all alcohol general on-premise license as outlined in agenda item number seven, as well as uh, approve the common victualler and the entertainment license contingent on review of the applications that are, have been submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Congratulations to all of you. Um, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you very thank much. You for, for keeping this business open and um, for just acknowledging the importance it does have for downtown. Thank you for Volcon for being such a believer <laughs> in me. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. It's, it's still the fastest hearing I've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> Just don't come back. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Thank you all. Right. Yeah, good bye luck. Bye. Oh my God, that's great.
<laughs> Moving on to someone who never screws up. Item number nine, application of <laughs> liquor licenses for, Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> for building a brewing type wine and malt at 130 Pine Street in Florence for events occurring at Bombix on December 8th, 6 to 10, December 10th, 6 to 10, December 18th, 6 to 10 p.m. And could you just state your name for the record? Uh, I am O'Brien Tomlin. Great, thank you for coming. Um, you wanna let us know how the last event went? That would have been the, the first, I believe. Yeah, sure. Real quick though, I did on the application apply for the, on the same sheet, the 18th and the 19th, which is a Saturday and Sunday, the same hours. Okay. Um, I, I sent Annie an email this morning when I okay. noticed it on the agenda. Um, it's been going pretty well. Uh, honestly, uh, we're kind of breaking even and it's, uh, you know, we're not really in the venue yet. We're sort of in a separate room, but people are happy to see us there. Uh, it's been great working with Artifact. Uh, we you know, have been doing fairly well. Uh, you know, it's a, like I said, it's 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 great to kind of present the the whole Bombix thing as a as sort of a, a, a you know gives it a I don't want to say like a realness, but you know, people have been coming and, and it's switched around a little bit. We've had a few people come earlier and come and have a beer beforehand. We've had some people stay after with some of the artists, uh, and it's it's been a good reception. Uh, albeit, you know, it's uh, you know, I've had someone volunteering with me to help, and uh, you know, but it's been fine. We've been covering our costs, and uh, it's been really nice, and it's been. The music has been great. I mean, I have to say it's a gorgeous venue. I just am excited for it to be there. And uh, um, I was approached uh, by Cassandra and those guys. They're like, oh, what can we do to make this better for you? I said, you know what? I'm going into it with a very open mind <laughs> and that I'm not going to be walking out of there, you know, with pockets full of cash. And But it's it's great. You know, it gives us exposure. Both Jake and I agree on that. And we also like supporting something that we believe in. So it's kind of a win-win, you know. Um, but people are kind of catching on. And I got to say, it's been some some really great stuff. You know, the, the Cuban jazz, Terrence uh, Blanchard, who did a lot of Spike Lee's soundtracks was there. Um, we had this guy, Superman, who's a Native American uh, sampler, rapper, did some uh, traditional dance in what they call fancy dress. Uh, you know, you see a real, there's been a real mixed crowd there. Uh, you know, younger people, older people, you know, it's, 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 it's been, you know, it's been good. So it's not like, you know, you know, we didn't go into it thinking this was going to be, you know, crazy, you know, but I think as it grows, so will we, and hopefully it'll have some more, you know, we'll be doing more events and, uh, you know, I haven't seen anything for January yet, but, uh, but like I said, we're sort of a little detached from the main venue, but that's been working out fine. And, you know, we've been, you know, most people are getting a beer, you know, and I've had some chips for sale and I actually got one complaint was that we weren't charging enough for the chips and the seltzer because <laughs> I was doing like 50 cents a bag and a dollar for a seltzer. And they're like, oh, that's kind of ridiculous. You would think it'd be, I said, like, well, um, you know, get more if you want, but I just kind of like to provide it here. We're making our margin, but you know, why charge you two bucks for a seltzer? You know, it's just people want to have something. So, but it's been very positive. And like I said, uh, it's been, you know, well received by people who either happy to see we're there and happy that there's something there. So that's good, you know. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Um, Helen, do you have any questions? No, just comments. I concur with everything you said. I did go to the Ife show. It was amazing. Okay. The yep, venue, yep. venue spectacular. The beer is good. Sorry, I'm such a lightweight. Um, but uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but, um, yeah. but yeah, and I agree with you. I think it's just going to grow. So I hope I hope it continues to do well for them and also for you who's, you know, serving there. And yeah, and the setup was great and safe. Yeah, and I mean, I've only, sorry about my lighting in here, by the way, but my <laughs> desk lamp Why did they put you in a cave? <laughs> but yeah, I know. That's where they put me in the cave. But uh, like I said, I've only done one event previously to this with uh, Cassandra, uh, which was the Bar Bays in the Woods up in uh, Montague. And it's been really great working with them. You know, it's kind of fun for me to not be in charge of everything for once, <laughs> you know, like not having to worry about all the things, just my thing. So that's been kind of nice too. And so, uh, yeah. I have no other questions. Yeah. And I don't either. And I do see that the paperwork where it says December 18th and 19th on that. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Do you want to make the motion, Helen? Uh, yeah, so I'll make a motion to approve. Where am I? Hang on. The applications for short-term liquor licenses 
for building a Bruin brewing, and I'll just say the dates again since we didn't get them all for December um, at Bombix for December eighth, six to ten p.m. December tenth, six to ten p.m. December eighteenth and nineteenth, um, six to ten p.m. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good rest of your night. Yeah. You too. Okay. Moving on, items 10, 11, and 12 are all Academy of Music. Melissa, I apologize. I should have just done these when you were here for your the first one. <laughs> Sorry about okay. that. It's fine. Um, agenda number 10, application for short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music Incorporated, 274 Main Street, December 30th, 2021, 6 to 12 a.m. for Bob Marley. This is a wine and malt license and with a requested fee waiver. And it's all the same. Um, it it is, except they added a second show to that day. Okay. So can I extend it to four thirty p.m. to? That should be fine. Annie okay. can poke us if that's not okay. And we won't need it till twelve a.m. But um, yeah, four thirty would be great. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, then I, Helen, do you have any? No, I don't have any questions. questions. And I'll make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor license with the amendment of beginning at 4.30 p.m. on December 30th for Bob Marley Wine and Malt with a, a approved fee waiver. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Items number 11, request to amend a previously approved short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music. Um, with a new date and time, I'm a little confused by this one. So Sweet Back Sisters hap were supposed to happen. Is that right? They were supposed to be on the 19th and they changed it to the 18th. Oh, okay. So we're just changing the date. Yep. Okay. So uh, no questions, Helen. Do you have no, a question? No, no, <laughs> yeah. okay. Do you want to do that yeah. motion? Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the amendment to a previously approved short-term liquor license as detailed in item 11 on the agenda. I second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 12, request to rescind a previously approved short-term liquor license. The Academy of Music Incorporated, 274 Main Street. This was an event that was supposed to happen November 15th from seven to 11 for Friends the Musical, but it did not. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve rescinding that license. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you, Melissa. Thanks everybody. You were very patient, thanks. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on. Item 13, discussion of entertainment decibel level limits and entertainment license guidelines. Report back from the commissioners. Um, so Helen and I agreed at the last meeting that we would do some research because it seemed prudent to, to discuss ways to manage entertainment licenses moving forward given complaints. Um, and during that time, I have come to think that applying a blanket um, blanket regulations to all of the entertainment licenses that we issue is is not at all prudent because we really just have been concerning ourselves with one establishment that has had complaints. The other um, two establishments that we know of that have had complaints, in one case, the complaint never even made it to us because they were able to resolve it with the applicant, the uh, license holder themselves. And then um, the other complaint we did receive and we issued a notice to the establishment and that was the end of all of it. So I, uh, on the one hand, I hope it was helpful to do the research that we've done to, to learn a little bit about what other communities are doing. And I certainly wanna hear about uh, what you learned, Helen. I did not get a call back from the community that I reached out to, so. Okay. I have thing to offer and I reached out to West Hartford. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you bring up that point um, about it being a single establishment. So I, um, in my research, I reached out to the town of um, Montague, <clears throat> excuse me, who in 2016 made a very detailed um, set of restrictions um, with decibel levels and a chart and a table, you know, and times of day and locations. Um, for entertainment licenses. And when I reached out, um, I spoke to the clerk of the select board, who are the people who issue, I guess, the entertainment licenses. Um, it was interesting because she said it actually, 
the whole reason they did it was because of a single establishment um, that they were having issues with in their town, um, which sounded very familiar to me. <laughs> um, so, um, and long story short, I mean, they sort of went back and forth. There were complaints from the neighbors and issues with the establishment um, not complying. Um, and they had an outdoor patio at the time. This was pre-pandemic. Um, and so I think after a number of complaints and being called back out to the property on several occasions, they went ahead, implemented this very detailed um, set of restrictions. And I asked them if it resolved things and it sounded like yes and no. Um, they, um, one thing I found interesting was that the, that the way that they, you know, I said, who's, um, like measuring these decibels, who comes out when there's a complaint and it turns out, and you'll love this, Natasha, that it was the chair of the select board would have to go out there pretty much like every Friday and Saturday with a decibel reader. And apparently all the neighbors got decibel readers and I'm sure the owner of the establishment did too. So I just have this vision of them all standing outside at every concert, you know, comparing the decibel readings, which honestly sounds like a bit of a nightmare to me. Um, Agreed. Yeah. So, and for you, especially. Um, and it sounds like it, it sort of worked in that ultimately they ended up moving their music inside. And, and even when they moved it inside, it sounded like every time they opened the door or the window, there were issues with the decibels. Um, so I'm glad that you brought up this point about the, you know, do we make this blanket um, you know, set of restrictions in response to a single establishment. And having heard what happened in Montague, that would be my concern. Um, and honestly, because you, you know, you bring up these issues that there's been other establishments, that there's been complaints, but then they've been quickly resolved. And do we sort of, I hate to use the word, but like sort of punish every establishment, you know, because there's been issues at one. Um, you know, and, and if, so if down the road, you know, there were five different places where we continued to have these problems and I think it would make sense to do that. Um, and so I'm wondering, um, you know, what we do with a single establishment. And I know that um, John last time um, came before us and wanted an amendment to his, um, uh, to his entertainment license and how, how it was, um, what was written there. And I don't know, I guess I don't know if we are able at this meeting to just go ahead and address that specifically because it was, you know, I mean, we could view it as a continuation from the last meeting or if it's something where he'd have to come before us again. And and I don't, and I don't know if you know the answer or if I, I hate to call on you, Annie, because I know you're laying low, but if you're listening to this, <laughs> um, I don't know if, yeah, or if you or if you want to have more discussion, Natasha, before we even ask Annie that. So my thought about that is so part of the reason this whole dis we we started this discussion around having some regulations, so some parameters within which people work, so everybody knows what the rules are. Um, one of the issues was uh, who who had the authority to call in somebody to count the decibels, who's responsible for that? Who does the complaint go to? You know, we meet once a month. If there's a weekend event in the middle of a month and there's a complaint to the license commission, nothing happens for several more weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and it reminded me of the issue at Majestic downtown where a residential condo owner upstairs had complaints over the volume of music coming from Majestic. And that was, result. they can't, you know, they came to license commission more than once, but I believe they started their complaint process with the building department, because it's the building department who's responsible for um, oversight around noise ordinances in the city. And when there's a complaint to them, they authorize the sealer of weights and measures to go out with his official decibel counter and um, take the measurements. To me, we, we should not be the authority to be measuring decibels. It's, it's not, you know, that we're, that's not our expertise. Where this specific venue or establishment is concerned, I think that, um, I think there's going to be issues no matter what because of the 
the physical nature of the buildings that surround it. And, but again, I'm not an expert. So I don't, in my mind, it's, it must be possible for sound to bounce off walls, but maybe it's not, I don't know. I'm not the expert for that. So I don't know if, if this, um, I don't know if this particular location is appropriate for amplified music. There's no way to figure that out if, if we, if, if there aren't some parameters of some sort, but I don't think that we're the ones who should be setting those parameters. I think that we should be relying on what the city has on the books already. Right, right. Yeah. And speaking of that, I mean, cause yeah, I too, I'm not an expert right. on decibels. So that's a long I, way yeah. to get to saying yeah. that I think that we should have that piece sorted out mm -hmm. either in a discussion with the building commissioner or attorney Seawald, and is that the most appropriate way for that to happen? So then, when we do go to new license applicants, or um, you know John who wishes to amend his his application, they should know what the process is. Everybody at that time should know what the process is if there's a concern. And in John's case, that was, should be the neighbors because. I don't think this is ever really going to get resolved with music at that establishment and people not being upset that they hear it. Yeah, um, me, meaning um, resolve the issue of who, if there is a complaint, what's the process? Like, well, we can, I think we should establish a process and then announce that and then the process is going to happen and then the complaints will ensue, I'm sure. But they should go to the people who can deal with it first. And if it's a matter of volume, then it's going to require assessing the decibel levels. And that's not something we have an expertise in, but it does apply to an already established noise ordinance, which is dealt with through the building department. Right, if we tie it to that. And so, I mean, so, and we have the ability to say that we're tying it to. Well, I mean, it's how it happened with Majestic. And I honestly right. don't remember um, at that time which, what came first? Did they come to us first? And we yeah. somehow had the wisdom at that time to say, make a noise complaint to the building commissioner because they, they, they can authorize the decibel counter to go take care to address that or research that. Um, but I suspect what happened was that we didn't have that wisdom at that time. And that the, yeah. the, the neighbor who, who had the issues, the neighbors who had the issues did go straight to the building department. Yeah, because I do remember that Jim Nash was involved. So they involved yeah. the city councilor um, and it was two, if not three different meetings that they came back to, maybe just two. Right, and maybe um, it did, and maybe they contacted Jim first and yeah. Jim tied them into, you know, connected them with the building department or maybe he did that himself, I don't know. And there were lots of emails and letters, I thought too. And it's something yeah. I guess we could look back at. Yeah, it's certainly we'll see how that went, but yeah. It was certainly similar to what we were experiencing with the level of concern yeah. around the Florence issue. Right. But I feel like having that um, having a city official conduct the decibel count gave it some legitimacy. Uh -huh. It was not arbitrary. It was within the confines of, you know, an ordinance that's already on the books in terms uh -huh. of noise. And then for us, when we're issuing entertainment licenses, we have the purview to um, issue the time frame that the license is approved for. So we don't, you know, I'm not suggesting that we go so far as line everything up with the noise ordinance as it's written for the city because their decibel allowance goes up until I think 10 o'clock at night. And I don't think that's always appropriate for some of these licenses that are being issued. I, I do happen to have it in front of me because um, because during all this too, you know, I was saying I don't know much about decibels, but just doing research online of like the charts of like what is this decibel and that, um, um, the so the noise ordinance <clears throat> that the city has says that in business, commercial institutions, and mixed use, um, from seven a.m. to ten p.m. Um, is sixty-five decibels, which if my research is correct, is not very loud. I mean, it's sort of the a restaurant conversation, you know, which is kind of going back to what we were, Brian and I were talking about too. It's like, let's have music at a level that you can have a, a conversation at a restaurant. Right. Um, if that is accurate saying that that's 65 decibels, then that is limiting it pretty low. And I know, and I think the idea is that they do it right at the edge of the property, which would essentially be, I think, right behind where the music is. Um, so I guess, are so are you leaning towards, because I know we were talking about not having a blanket um, yep. 
noise ordinance for all entertainment licenses, does that mean you're talking specifically about this establishment, like applying some kind of decibel level to it? I, I, that's a good question. I, I, I think having as few, I, I don't think it's fair to limit something to one establishment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if, if we're not going to say to other establishments, these are the param parameters we've created for entertainment licenses. I don't see how we could do that to the one when we're still not the experts on the on the the volume mm -hmm. um, or the decibels. I would much rather rely on the whatever course the city takes when there's noise complaints. Okay. So then you okay. So, so I understand you're you're leaning towards saying like for anyone who takes out an entertainment license that you have to comply by you know what these general standards are that are being used for other yeah issues for the decibels yeah okay you know but also and and we've you know i don't know if i, I did notice in i don't know if it was the montague paperwork that annie has sent us or if it was west hartford i forget but and we've we have verbalized this when we've approved these licenses which is like be respectful of your neighbors mm -hmm cooperate and communicate with your neighbors if there's issues and and you know if people need that to be in writing as a regulation when licenses are issued I don't know it's common mm -hmm. sense to me but it doesn't always get applied by all of our community so um right um yeah and I mean the Montague one was very detailed in terms of yeah. like decibel a and decibel c and and hours a day and and I think theirs was to eight. And actually, I think other decibels went up to like 70 or something until 8 p.m. and then lower than that afterwards. I mean, this, if we want to be more restrictive, this one here that the city's already using is, is, is 65. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, if, we, if this discussion item is about decibel level limits in general, Mm -hmm. for entertainment licenses and guidelines then i don't then i i think that our any anything any regulations that we set should be in line with what the city has created already i don't you think do we, you do think i do i don't think we should recreate that rule right yeah that makes sense or recreate um, the wheel. Yeah. and what's interesting and and, a, and and an additional reason for that is because when John came to the last meeting or the meeting before, and he said that his decibel counter had him below 65. Yeah, or 60, he may have said 67. I don't know what he said. I thought it was somewhere in the 60s. He may have been yeah. 67, I don't know. It was surprisingly close to that talking 65 decibel thing. Right. So, but it's so, if that's accurate, if that reading was accurate, then how really are these abutters hearing it so loudly mm -hmm. in their homes. Right. And I'm sure there's a lot of, I mean, you know, I think this talks about two, or certainly in the Montague one, it talked about what kind of decibel reader it had to be. Right. Um, because right. you can't, you know, go yeah. out there with your app, you download it on your iPhone. And right. I'm, sh I'm sure <laughs> that the dealer of weights and measures has the right equipment. Right. Um, Okay, I mean, uh, I mean, it would, I mean, measurable, I do understand um, the advantage of having things that are measurable. I mm -hmm. will sort of state for the record or whatever. I don't love that it's two of us making this decision. I agree. In perpetuity. And I know that these things can always be revisited. Yeah. Um, part of me is wondering, <laughs> I don't want to keep being, you know, if there's like a softer version or which is saying that when there are complaints or something like, we will use this as a guide. We will use these decibels as a guide. I mean, and I don't know if that's what you were saying. Like, as opposed to saying like with any entertainment license, if you're outside, it, it needs to be, it can only achieve these decibel levels versus right. like something kicks in and then we, and then we use this, this yeah. ordinance, noise ordinance. Yeah. yeah, no, I think we can, it, we can be reasonable. Um, but most, I think the most important thing for me is just remembering this is all about one place. So yeah. the effort and the, the extra um, 
layers of difficulty a business owner has to go through right. shouldn't be dictated by us because one place is having issues. Right. And you know, from the from the very beginning, when the first application came in, there there were concerns based on the loud music for the you know entire year of the pandemic when entertainment was outside. And there was an expectation on our part that there would be, you know, really thorough communication happening from the business owner and the neighbors. Mm -hmm. I don't think that happened. So I don't know if, I don't know if anything that we do will ever fix that problem. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm wondering if then there, the language can be like, if this, then that, and if that still doesn't resolve it, then this, you know, and I know we're still talking about one establishment. Um, but something to sort of back it up to say, you know, because if, for example, we were going to say, yeah, we can amend it, your license, the way that you've requested, because I think he was just asking until eight o'clock and he had other limits about the number of people and things like that. Um, but yeah, if there's a way of saying, and it needs to be done in such a way that it doesn't disturb the neighbors, whatever the language is, I mean, I think there's language right. there. Um, I, even in this ordinance. And I guess it's like, and if there are complaints, then, then the, I don't know if we can say, and then the sealers of sealer weights and measures is going to come or whoever the city employee is going to come out and check it. And it has to Maybe. abide by these levels. And I feel like there needs to be another level because if by some magic, it really does hit 65 and it's still really bothering people. Then there needs to be like, and if it continues to be a nuisance, then it's still going to be revisited. Right. So, and so, and is that something, are we now talking about that's what we affix to this particular enter entertainment license? as like a test model. <laughs> right. Get, you mean based no. on the fact that this is the one license with the complaints? With the complaints and that's asking for an amendment. Yep. Well, he proposed, I mean, the, what he proposed in the amendment is he limited himself to how many musicians mm -hmm. could be playing at one time. Yeah. I don't once a week, I think it was, and 5 to 8 p.m. Once a week and 5 to 8. So that's not, yeah. none of that is unreasonable. Right. And then, you know, and we may have talked about this, it, it honestly doesn't matter how many musicians it is. It's all about how you adjust the amplification. It's all about the amplification. So he yeah. can have three musicians and they're just really loud. Yeah, they could wail, but um, yeah. Right. But now we're saying, and it can't go below, beyond 65 right. decibels. Right. And I, I do also just, you know, to be on the record with this, this establishment in question, they were never stripped of a license. They still have an, a, a, a lively scheduled indoor entertainment venue. Um, and they still are able to use an entertainment license outdoors acoustically. So, right. you know, we haven't, we've limited, we've, we've in amending that license to remove the amplification, it was an effort to limit what we couldn't, what wasn't able to be controlled, it seemed by dealing with the amplification. So we just removed it. Right. But I just think it's important also to say that they still have licenses. <laughs> yes, that's true. He does take it away. Yeah. And in my experience and whatever, going back to the acoustic and unplugged, not plugged, in my experience, you know, I have seen five musicians play who know, who have know a lot about amplification who are who have kept the sound levels low. Yes. Even more than maybe like one or two people who don't know what they're doing with amplification. Right. Like it makes, right. it does make all the difference. It makes um, it possible to do. Yeah. You know, it's possible to do. And I, th and um, I mean, we could talk about this one agenda item for hours on end, but you know, the initial application way back when was to provide background music for diners. And um, you know, I don't know where the line gets crossed from a licensing and zoning perspective when an outdoor entertainment venue has been created. Right. Because the license was not issued for those purposes. Yeah. So there's that also. Um, but I wanna be mindful of Annie. <laughs> right, right. And, and the fact that we can't, you know, that this is, you know, I think for the, for the purposes of this agenda item, I think that we are in agreement that we, we won't be creating blanket regulations 
of decibel count that is separate from what the city already has on the books for the noise ordinance. Right. And that um, between now and then our next meeting, I'll talk more with Annie about the process that happened at Majestic. So it's just so that we're clear on that and that because that seemed to be a model that was most appropriate and legitimate in terms of having a decibel counter, a person with equipment that was appropriate. Um, and then we'll discuss at the next meeting how to apply that if necessary to the request for the amended license at JJ's. Right, yeah. Yeah, and I just want to say, I mean, I throughout this discussion, I'm leaning more towards if it's allowed. Right. Really talking about the decibels in relation to this specific license. Yes. And then, and then it's like a test run, you know, and to see if, if, this, if this works. Yeah. And it may have the same result that it did in Montague doing the blanket thing, that they were trying right. to deal with one establishment and they ended up having to move back inside. And that could be what happens, but we don't know. I mean, you know, I've, it's true. I mean, when you say it, it's like a, it's four or five different meetings that we've been dealing with this same issue. It's and, been months. Yeah, more yeah, than yeah. any other establishment. Yep. For this, so. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, so let's move on then to agenda item 14, report from building commissioner on annual liquor license inspections. We have someone here from building commissioner's office? We do not, but there's a, um, there's a report that I emailed. Yep. We have that. So it looks like um, they're moving along. They inspected 60 establishments, 52 passed, five have outstanding issues and three are not being inspected because they're not reopening. Um, the five establishments that need reinspections anticipate finishing that process by December 3rd. So those dates are being set and that's that, right? Yep. Do we need anything else about that, Annie, to discuss? Nope, that's it. Okay, done with 14. Um, item 15, request approval of annual 2022 liquor license renewals and discussion of renewal issues, annual package store licenses, annual liquor licenses contingent upon certificate of inspection with the following exceptions. Freedom Post 28 Incorporated DBA American Legion. Um, so I'll just paraphrase so you can do less talking. We've done this in the past where we uh, allow uh, we allow you to approve licenses as you're doing that work rather than bringing each one to us. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And um, the one exception, the Freedom Post 28 Incorporated DBA American Legion, I believe finding a person has been difficult that there's no manager available or something um i guess i guess they're the whatever they're called the uh the, the club i don't know they're like they disbanded um because they don't have enough people okay um, but they want to the exalted ruler i think he's called they want they want to try and open again uh, <laughs> but i let them know that they can't just right when they have enough people they can't just reopen and get their liquor license if they don't renew it um but there's really no premise attached to the license so i don't know so I, I don't know if, I don't know. Okay. Um, because last year they didn't, there wasn't open last year either. So I don't know if you want to allow it to continue or allow it to be renewed, but we would lose the license if not. Yeah, so I don't want to belabor anything, Annie, because you sound terrible. I'm so sorry. Um, but I'm just looking on this inspections report and it says is it's lists as closed American Legion is that the same one what does it say on the inspection it's, sorry report? on the inspection report it says that three of them that have closed three places have closed Patria Center Street Cafe and American Legion right which I assume is the same one or is there do we have more than one of those no, that's the same. Okay. Same one. um that's 
Center Street Cafe, they they, they closed because I guess they're gutting it. Okay. Um. But, well, I'm just, I mean, I guess I'm just asking specifically in reference to this thing about the, the American Legion. You know, it seems like we can't, so you're saying you would suggest that we do not renew their license because at this point they're closed. Well, not necessarily because then we would lose the license. I, I would maybe suggest putting a contingency on it that you speak to someone in six months. Yeah. Okay. We did that for one of, I think the Pine Grove. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that something you need a vote on, Annie, or, or just this discussion is sufficient? Um, yeah, well, we'll need a vote for the package store licenses and then a vote for the annual liquor. Okay. And then a vote for the American Legion. Okay. Then I will make a motion to approve the annual 2022 liquor license renewals and discussion of renewal issues for the annual package store licenses. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I will request the same approval of annual 2022 liquor license renewals and discussion of renewal issues for the annual liquor licenses contingent upon certificate of inspection. Second. All in favor? Aye. And then regarding Freedom Post 28 Incorporated DBA American Legion currently disbanded, um, I will make a motion to give them a six month period of time to come forward with, um, with a plan. Is that right, Annie? I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, because I screwed it all up. Um, <laughs> I So for the Freedom Post, we, we just need for them to come back to us within six months with their plan, correct? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so then I'll make a motion to for the approval of the annual 22 liquor license renewal and discussion of renewal issues for Freedom Post 28 Incorporated um, to be contingent on them returning to us within six months with their plans. Second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. Okay, item number 16. Request approval to renew and issue 2022 licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents for common victualler, auto amusement, entertainment, in holder, lodging, car dealer class one, two, and three. I am all for this. Yes. All right, you wanna make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the renewal and issuance of 2022 licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents as detailed in item 16 of the agenda. I will second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 17, approval of 2022 license commission meeting schedule. Um, how are Wednesdays looking for you, Helen? I mean, right now, uh, fine. I mean, I think things will change seasonally, but for now we'll just go yep. forward with this. Yeah. yeah. So it makes sense to just carry on with our first Wednesday of the month and unless we need to amend it, which we will have the flexibility to do at a future date. Sounds great. Okay. Um, Annie, do you need a motion on that one? No, that's okay. Okay. 18, approval of minutes. I had no issues with the minutes. So you them, loved them. Motion to approve the minutes on November 3rd. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay. Item 19, new business. I have no new business other than I want Annie to get horizontal and sleep. Yeah, I totally agree. And Annie, I don't know if this is helpful, but I'm realizing that what you have is probably two of my four neighbors next door got completely yeah wiped out by I, i'm guessing the same thing if it's not COVID, and they were, it just oh. was terrible but they did move through it is the good news so <laughs> i don't know how long that took but it was yes so the the mom and the son next door both got nailed with it so oh yeah so take care of yourself God. yeah thank you both yeah i hope you feel better thank you um then i will make a motion to adjourn all right Excellent, all in favor? 
Bye. Bye.